When it comes to working on these older mechanical fuel injection systems, there's one thing I go after right after I deal with a thermostat, and that's the distributor. Now you're looking at these old point style distributors, and if you've been around these, uh, you know the problems, all right? You have failed condensers, you have corroded uh, points, pitted points, and the everything gradually deteriorates and when it does you start losing the quality of voltage to the spark plugs and you know when that happens when you get a weak spark in the cylinder guess what happens to the fuel air mixture that's right it's not going to burn as completely as it would if it had a really hot spark and that's why in later years they went to electronic ignitions to eliminate the problems with points and to produce hotter spark that it would allow you to gap the spark plug further apart giving a much more uh, you know I guess strong spark that would really complete the burn of that fuel air mixture so if you've got rich running problems you know you know right behind making sure that your engine is coming up to full operating temperature you want to make sure that your distributor is delivering maximum spark. And in my humble opinion, okay, this is my opinion, I do not believe it can really do that with the original system. Particularly with age, as parts start to wear. So, uh, this isn't gonna be a complete video in rebuilding distributors, but I'm going to give you a couple options. I've converted all my older gasoline Mercedes, pre-1972, uh, to electronic ignition. Now some of you purists will say, well that's not original. Okay, you have to decide whether you want original or whether you want, uh, you know, performance. Uh, uh, the systems I install can uh, do not harm the car and they can be converted right back to the original point condenser system quite quickly. But I first want to show you, we'll, we'll open up Happier's uh, distributor here and just take a look at it. There's a couple things you want to you want to check right away and after we look at this one I'm gonna talk a little bit about two options that you might consider if you have one of these older Mercedes it doesn't even have to be an older Mercedes <laughs> if you have one one of these that has the old point style ignition then uh, we have some options we have some good options that you you can help to help your old engine produce a hot, much hotter spark and hopefully eliminate a part you know there's there's multiple issues here you don't when you go after these fuel injection systems it's never just one thing because the cars are so old it's uh, in my experience it's usually a half a dozen things you know you have a thermostat you have a uh, distributor you have a uh, valve adjustment you have uh, distributor timing cam timing and then you get into the fuel injection system and then you talk about the fuel injectors and all these things, can you imagine all those things together getting to a point where they're not either not adjusted properly or they're worn and you wonder why these cars run red. So let's take a look at Happier's distributor, see if we can spot any problems inside. First thing I'm doing here is I'm just kind of checking uh, vacuum lines, checking the vacuum hose for any cracks, security of the vacuum hose, I'm checking the vacuum Diaphragm. Now later on I'm going to put a vacuum tester to this to make sure this does hold vacuum and that it actuates uh, the rod. Uh, let's pop this cover off. Uh, we'll take a look at the distributor cap. It's one of the first things you want to inspect. Okay. Let's take a look down there. I'll pull this rotor off. Um, look at that. You got quite a bit of carbon buildup. Uh, all six of those of those points there's heavy buildup now I could probably scrape this away but you know what happens when you start scraping the carbon carbon away sure enough you know it's it's you can see where it's kind of worn into those uh, those points um, you always want to check this carbon brush here that's okay but I'm gonna I'm gonna replace this cap has been replaced it's not original but I'm going to replace this. If we look at the, if we look at the rotor, there's a little bit of wear there. This doesn't look too bad. 
But as long as I'm replacing the cap, I'm going to replace the rotor too because uh, these parts aren't that expensive. So um, now looking down inside, I can almost guarantee you, you're not going to be able to see it in this video, but if I open up these points, yeah, they're pretty, pretty badly pitted. At least they're not all corroded from sitting. You know, I've, I did have the engine running. Um, and I'm going to replace the points, so I'm not w too worried about the condition of the points. I'm not too worried about, you know, how much these are going to cost. But this is the most important thing you want to check on these old distributors, and that's shaft play right here. Watch as I grab a hold of the end of the shaft and move it back and forth. Look at that. See, I've got, I would say, about a 32nd of an inch. Now, this is not too bad, but this is enough to affect, if I had this up on the top of the cam, I could actually open and close the points just by moving the shaft. So if you have a lot of shaft wear and you want to try to maintain your point ignition, forget it. Your points are going to be jumping all around and they're going to be changing gap settings and you're going to have erratic running. That can be checked by a dwell meter, but uh, in this case, um, you know, I. I'd, if I wanted to keep these points, I'd probably have to take this distributor out and uh, rebuild it, get some new bushings in it. Now, I, I've got other used distributors around that I could maybe find. Another one. Look, look at the play in this one. There is no play. See that? Absolutely no play. There should be, those bushings should be real tight. We're going to take uh, my hand pump tester and plug it in right there, okay? Now watch, you're going to watch vacuum build up, you're also going to watch this rod, how it's going to rotate this plate inside the distributor, it changes the location of the points. Now watch this, see, see that? See the points move? Now I've got a little bit of a leak down, okay? That, uh, that's got me concerned. I'm going to double check my hose connection, push it on there, okay. Uh, I don't like that leak down right here, so I'm going to probably have to look for, get one of my distributors out and see if I can find a good replacement. Once I repair those two mechanical issues with my uh, distributor, I'm going to go ahead and install this aftermarket electronic ignition. Now, I'm holding two types here, okay? Um, they're both called electronic ignition conversions, but one of them, this one right here, is really a points conversion. <laughs> it takes out the mechanical points and puts in a magnetic pickup that eliminates the potential for the points, you know, getting out of adjustment and getting pitted and burned. It also eliminates the condenser, which is, can be a possible problem. Uh, so when, when you, this is, this is called a protronics and it, they call it a upgrade to an electronic ignition. Uh, never change points again, but once again, I would, I would call this an electronic ignition tongue in cheek, okay? It, it doesn't mean it's a bad product. I'm just saying that it's really a points substitute ignition, okay? It's not really adding um, an electronic spark module or an ECU to your. Uh, <laughs> Your distributor and uh, you know ignition system, but if 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 you want if you want to um, you know keep everything looking original, like if you take your car to the show or you don't want people seeing anything, you can you can put this inside the distributor. You just basically all you do is you take the rotor out, you take the condenser out, you take the points out, and you put this in, and everything else stays the same. Now, um, this particular company does offer a special coil which will up the spark to about 40,000 volts. So the combination of uh, this points substitute here and then adding another coil which will really boost the spark can accomplish pretty much what a, uh, you know, this other electrical um, electronic upgrade that I, I prefer. And that's, that's this one here, it's called the Crane Cams Ignition. Now this has a little bit different point setup uh, it uses an optical trigger instead of a magnetic pickup, but it also has a module. It has an external module, a box, that really boosts uh, the spark. 
So you, you can kind of make that decision um, based on, uh, you know, what you want to show inside your engine compartment. You can, you can hide the box. I, uh, I prefer the crane because I just, I just love getting, <laughs> getting a really hot spark. I can gap the spark plugs a little bit wider. And almost every, I would say not almost, but every one of my older Mercedes that I've put this on, I've noticed an immediate improvement even before making any other adjustments. We're talking improvements in starting. Much quicker starts. We're talking improvements in idle, smooth idle. And then of course we're talking improvements in power and fuel economy, right away. Now if you add this to you know, thermostat and valve adjustment and some of these other issues we've been talking about and we'll be talking about in future videos in this series, then you can get a pretty good, pretty good running engine and eventually you may, you just may not see that black soot in your tailpipe anymore. Let me show you these two systems up close. I'm not going to go over how to, you, to install this in this, in this video. It's, it's, uh, both, both of them come with instructions and um, maybe at a later point when I get my distributor rebuilt and I get this installed and, and we get this ready for a road test, I'll come back and show you what the actual installation looks like, but it, it might be nice for you to see these two up close and you can kind of see the difference. I want to show you the Protronics point substitute ignition, I'm going to call it. Note here this part right here. This is the part that bolts in where your points would normally screw into the distributor. And then you remove, you remove this, uh, you know, your rotor and you put, in the place of the rotor, you put a magnetic sleeve, okay? The mag magnetic sleeve goes right on the shaft, distributor shaft, and there's a magnet in there, and every time it rotates by this module, it'll trigger the spark. So there's a sequence where you set the gap, and then, of course, you time the engine the same way you would time your engine with points. So this is pretty simple. This, you, you, this doesn't take very long to install, and once you get the, uh, the distributor cab back on, it's fairly well hidden. Now, the crane is a little bit different. Here you see it has a heavy, heavy ignition module, has a aluminum housing with fins for cooling, and then instead of a magnetic pickup, it has what is called an optical trigger, and then it has these shutters. Now the, sh the optical trigger jumps from this point to this point. And when the, when the shutter comes through and opens that trigger, as it rotates between those two points, then that fires the spark. Okay, so you have a shutter and an optical trigger. This uh, bolts in where the points would, would go and then the shutter fits right on the shaft where your um, rotor would go. So this, this is a little bit more complicated to install. And once again, it's going to be pretty hard to hide this. Uh, you know, you can get it out of sight, but uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to hide it from a judge if you were going, <laughs> going to a car show. But let me tell you, this thing really produces the spark. If you decide you want to consider this crane cams ignition system, um, it comes with, what is it? Comes with six different shutters. These, it, it does come with uh, uh, about 12 pages of instructions. And one of the things that can get kind of confusing is it talks about all these different types of distributors, different manufacturers. This isn't just for Mercedes Benz, it's for you know, Jaguars, Bosch, Mallory, uh, even some of the Japanese, Lucas, uh, even has Morelli in here. So what I did is I wrote a manual on how to install this in a Mercedes engine. And, and it kind of explains which shutter, which brackets, and it kind of is an, an addition. It is addition to uh, this manual here. So, you know, if you, if you want to look at that, um, I'm sure, you, you know, you can use these instructions. They're going to walk you through it. But if you want some additional help, haven't done something like this before, uh, I also on my website I'll tell you which uh, which model because it's there's quite a few models there and you need to get the right one. 
you need to get the right model for the, the six cylinder <laughs> Mercedes engines. So if, I'll just put a link below, uh, click on the show more below the, the video description, it'll take you to some links. And uh, you know, if you're, if, you're looking, you know, if you're looking for a used uh, distributor, I've got quite a few used distributors. If you have one that's really worn out, you might want to check that out on my website as well. And, and it, it, be sure and subscribe to my channel. We're going to continue on now. Um, we have, we have the, th the thermostat. We have the, uh, <laughs> the distributor <laughs> sorted out. N n now, we're going to go after the fuel injectors. That's right. This is one of the things I think is very often overlooked with a system, people just think, well, you know, I'm going to go through all these adjustments on my injection pump and all this idle speed and air valves and all this stuff and linkages and everything. And what about fuel injectors? Can you, how do you test those? How do you know if they're spraying properly? How do you know if they're leaking? Guess what happens if they leak fuel and they don't close completely? <laughs> Black carbon in the pipe? <laughs> okay. So that's going to be the, the next part, um, and you're probably thinking, well, Kent, when are you going to get to the fuel injection system? Okay, I hope I'm making my point here. That's, I'm trying to make a point. You don't go after the fuel injection system until everything else is dealt with, all right? Or you'll never, you'll never get it right. So just stay tuned for the next episode. Be sure and subscribe to this channel. I don't know when it's going to come up, but if you subscribe, you'll get notification when the next video on Happier goes up on YouTube.